At this very moment, you're surrounded by an invisible yet powerful type of spirit guide that you can call on in times of need and that can help you overcome great challenges in your life. And what type of spirit guide am I talking about? These guys! <laughs> One of these amazing beings is what's known as your spirit animal. And in this video, you're going to learn how to connect with these powerful spirit guides so they can come in and help you when you need. You'll learn what a spirit animal is and the three main ways in which spirit animals can help you. Then we're going to go over the spiritual meaning of each individual animal. And then I'm going to share my simple five-step process to help you discover who your spirit animal is and how you can better connect with them more quickly. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the Heart Alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell so you get notified as soon as I publish new content. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram where I share weekly tips and advice that you won't find here on YouTube. And before we jump into the video, I wanted to remind you that there is a supplemental free workbook that accompanies this video. It has some key takeaways and some homework exercises so you can go deeper on the content that we discuss in this video. I'll leave a link to that free workbook in the description box below so you can download after watching this video. On to part one of the video, what's a spirit animal? So a spirit animal is a spirit guide that presents itself in the physical or energy form of an animal. Okay, so the spirit animal basically uh, comes to you either in physical form, so sometimes a spirit animal will actually appear to you in physical form, in flesh and bone, right in front of you, in the form of an animal visitation. Sometimes your spirit animal will actually come to you in energy form, meaning that it'll come to you in a non-physical way, maybe when you're doing a meditation, maybe when you're doing a ceremony, uh, or just randomly, maybe in a dream, that can happen also. So these are the two ways in which that the spirit animal comes to you. It's a type of spirit guide, but in the form of an animal. Now the spirit animal is beautiful because what ends up happening is that spirit animal is, each spirit animal is imbued with different energies. They're very unique and they have very different energy signatures. And so when a different animal comes to you, you'll know immediately that you're calling in a different vibration, you're calling in a specific type of guidance because each animal has its own uh, unique vibration and unique energy signature that's very, very beautiful, but very unique to that animal. Now let's distinguish between three types of different spirit guides that come in the form of animals. There are three, uh, we, I'm calling them a uh, spirit animal right now, but there's actually three types. So let's go over them so that we could get our terminology straight. Okay. So the first one is the spirit animal. So the spirit animal is an animal that comes to you when you need what's known, what shamans call their medicine. Okay. So shamans use the term medicine. An animal brings you their medicine, meaning that an animal will come to you when you need a specific type of vibration or message from that specific animal. Okay. So that's known as a spirit animal. It comes to you when you need their medicine. All right. That's one type. A second type is what's known as your totem animal. All right. So, or your animal totem. Um, the animal totem is a lifelong guide. So I've talked about this in previous videos that I've done on different types of spirit guides. The animal kingdom gives you a spirit guide as part of your lifelong team of, of your spirit team. Okay. So that's your totem. Your totem is an animal guide that's with you your whole life. And it's the same guide that's a part of your overall spirit team, right? That's known as your totem. All right. So that's the second type. The third type is what's known as the power animal. So I don't know if you've heard that term before. The power animal is an animal that comes to you when you call upon it. All right. So I love it. It's a little bit different from the spirit animal in the sense that in the power animal, you're calling the animal to you. So this is great, especially the more that you know about the different types of animals, you're going to get better at knowing what animal to call to you, knowing what animal you need help from. Okay. So the power animal comes to you by your direct invocation and by your direct invitation. On to part two of the video, how spirit animals help. Okay. So how they help. There are really three main ways in which spirit animals help us. The first way is they imbue energy. Okay. So 
Uh, what this means is that the spirit animal will actually transmit their energy. They will share their energy signature with you. They will imbue you with their particular energy. This is especially true of your totem animal. So that's that, that lifelong uh, animal guide that you have. Your totem will really imbue you with their energy, sometimes to a point where people don't even notice that that's happening because a lot of times people don't know that they have a, a totem animal or that they have a permanent animal that's a part of their spirit team. They have no idea that that's what's going on. And so when they discover it, that's when they're like, oh my God, I actually have a lot of personality characteristics, even physical characteristics that are similar to the totem animal. So as an example, my totem animal is the cheetah. And when I discovered that I was a che that I had a cheetah totem animal, I just laughed because so many of my habits and the way that I live my life and my personality traits are similar to a cheetah. So I do things really quickly. I work at lightning speed usually, but I need to rest because if I don't stop to rest, I burn out <laughs> exactly like a cheetah. So the cheetah is the fastest animal on the planet, but the cheetah can only run that fast for a limited amount of time. And then she must lay down and rest or she will die. <laughs> so the cheetah only has a limited amount of capacity to sprint like that. And it's the same thing with me. I do things really, really fast, but then I do need to rest. And I've learned how to kind of appreciate that energy about me. So that's a little bit of a characteristic of the the cheetah that's imbued in my personality. And it's the same thing for you. Your totem animal will imbue you with their energy and you're going to carry that energy for the rest of your life. That's really cool. The second way in which a spirit animal can help you is to bring you medicine. Okay, so this is when the spirit animal comes to you because you need something specific from their energy and they bring you that medicine, that energy medicine that's particular to them, all right? Now, this can happen in physical form or in energy form. So what I mean by this is that an animal can bring you their medicine by literally physically appearing in front of you. This happens with a lot of us. So sometimes when we're paying attention, when we're present, and when we're very connected to the animal, in the nature realm, you'll notice that you will have interaction with spirit animals in the physical form more frequently because you're awakened to them, you're aware of them, all right? So the animal can literally show up in front of your face. That could be the way that, that the animal wants to bring you their medicine in physical form, but it doesn't always have to be in physical form. The spirit animal can also bring you their medicine in vision form, in energy form. And this can happen sometimes when you're in meditation, maybe your eyes are closed and an animal comes to you. You can feel it in your third eye, you can see it, or you can feel their energy. This happens to me so many times also, okay? So it can happen to you in either way. It, they could come to you also in your dreams. So uh, again, the, the importance here is that they're bringing you their medicine and whatever energy signature they have, they're bringing that medicine to you, whether they appear to you physically or whether they appear to you in energy form. The third way in which spirit animals help us is they bring us messages, okay? So this will happen. The more that you know about the animal meanings, the more you're gonna understand the type of messages that they bring to you when they appear in your life. Okay, so animals, just by appearing in your radar, whether physically or in energy form, they are not just bringing their energy, but they're bringing messages associated with each animal. Each animal has a different meaning. And so when an animal appears to you, you're going to know that they're bringing messages specific to that type of animal that's appearing. And in a little bit, we're going to go over the meaning of certain animals. And so you'll know that if one of these animals appear to you, the messages that that animal carries with it. On to part three of the video, animal meanings. So this would be, this video would take forever if I went through every single animal in the animal kingdom. Okay, so I'm not gonna do that. This is not an exhaustive list. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to share with you a list of the top animals that tend to interact as spirit guides with people the most, okay? But you may be visited by an animal that's not on this list and that's totally fine, there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just gonna go over a list that I tend to encounter in my life and in the lives of my clients, okay? But this is not an exhaustive list at all. So I'm gonna leave you a pro tip here. Here's your pro tip. If your animal is not on this list, or even if it is on this list, what you're gonna get used to doing though is you're gonna get used to using Mr. Google, okay? So what you're gonna do is when you have an animal come to you or when you find your totem animal, you're going to Google spiritual meaning of fill in the blank, okay? So spiritual meaning of a lion, spiritual meaning of a wolf. 
you're going to Google that and you're going to find a ton of information online that's going to help you go deeper into the meaning of that specific animal for you. Okay, so that's your pro tip. Um, but now let's get into the list of some of the top animals that appear as guides. The first one is the bear. Okay, really common, common spirit animal for people. The bear symbolizes just enormous strength, a lot of groundedness. So the bear comes through with medicine of groundedness. And the bear comes through with the medicine of learning how to work with the cycles of nature. So the bear is a master of the cycles of nature. It hibernates, then it wakes up, then it hibernates. So the bear medicine, the medicine of the bear is to teach you how to work, how to flow with life and how to work with the cycles of nature, but also how to be grounded and strong and resilient. Okay. So the, the, these are the, this is the main medicine of the bear. Now to the bee or bone. Bumblebee. Okay, so bees come to you um, really as a way, their medicine is all about community. Okay, so bee medicine is about community. It's also about selflessness. Okay, so so bees really work, they, they do not exist by themselves. A bee by themselves dies. So bees really exist, even though they're individuals, they're individuals that you really, you could look at them as almost like an ecosystem or almost like a community that is interconnected uh, and that each individual needs each other. So there's a lot of selflessness in, in bee medicine. Um, but bee medicine is also really strong in work ethic, okay? So if you've heard the term the worker bee. Um, so bee medicine, bees are they they just they are so they have a very strong work ethic they're always working for the betterment of their community they work nonstop to help build these beautiful honeycombs and this beautiful amazing huge community um, that's their hive okay so this is the main medicine for bee a lot about selflessness and knowing how to work in group knowing how to be a part of a community and also um, having very strong work ethic now on to butterfly one of my favorite animals I love butterfly medicine so much so butterfly medicine is all about metamorphosis that's their main main medicine to you it's about metamorphosis, about learning how to deeply transform. It's the, the, the deepest medicine, of, aside from metamorphosis, the deepest term that comes in for the butterfly is deep transformation, okay? So butterflies are absolute masters at bringing you the medicine of knowing how to tr literally transform yourself from a caterpillar into a beautiful butterfly, okay? So it's one of the animals that has the biggest transformation on the planet. They go through literally being a crawling creature to a beautiful butterfly, and that's their cycle of metamorphosis. So the butterfly it comes to you really Really, when your life is going through deep changes or when you need to make changes in your life, the butterfly will come in and show you that. All right. So metamorphosis, deep transformation is the medicine of the butterfly. Now on to elephant medicine. So elephant medicine is all about strength paired with compassion. It's a really, really amazing type of medicine, very unique and very unusual. Because what the elephant does, so the elephant in India, uh, so uh, God Ganesh, is known as the destroyer of obstacles, okay, so and, and uh, the god of abundance, right? And so it's in the form of an elephant. So elephant, across most cultures, talks about being kind of the animal that just plows through obstacles. Elephants are very, very powerful. They can plow through pretty much anything. But the uniqueness of the elephant is that it plows through things. So it's it has the medicine of helping you overcome obstacles, but it does that with compassion on the, at the same time, which seems like sometimes it doesn't go hand in hand, like barreling through an obstacle and having compassion. But these things go hand in hand with elephant medicine. So elephant medicine comes in and there's a certain gentleness to it. Yeah, it does help you overcome obstacles and plow right through them, but it does that with gentleness. And it's really hard to explain this, but it's a very unique quirk of the elephant. But it's this beautiful pairing of just knowing how to overcome your difficulties, but doing that with compassion and with gentleness, not with violence, okay? That's the medicine of the elephant. 
Now onto the medicine of hummingbird. So hummingbird comes to you with the medicine of extreme resilience. Okay, so a lot of people don't know this, but some species of hummingbirds actually migrate from South America to North America. And scientists have no idea how they actually do this because how can a creature that's so tiny, that has such an extraordinarily fast metabolism because their wings beat so fast and their heart beats so fast, that scientists are sometimes puzzled at how this creature can migrate thousands of miles to get from South America to North America. And and this symbolism, this pattern that they have, this behavior that the hummingbird has, shows you the medicine of extreme resilience. The hummingbird is an animal that you call to you when you really need a lot of resilience to get through some, some difficult stuff in your life, okay? So hummingbird shows you resilience. They just keep going. No matter how little they are, they just keep going. Extreme resilience is the major uh, energy of the hummingbird. Now on to the horse. So the horse is a symbol of freedom, a lot of determination, but I would say probably freedom is the biggest energy signature of the horse. And you know, if you really want to see this characteristic of freedom in action, you can just look at the, you know, the beautiful, beautiful wild mustangs of North America and how they just roam the plains. And it's just beautiful to see a wild horse in its natural wild habitat as opposed to a domestic horse. Domestic horses still have the energy signature of that. But if you want to see a horse in its full energy, it's wild horses like mustangs. And so the horse will bring you determination. Um, it'll bring you freedom. It'll also bring you the energy of endurance. Okay, so horses can run miles and miles and miles without stopping. They're, they're an animal that has extreme endurance, okay? So they can just keep going. But freedom, I would say that freedom is the biggest message that the horse brings to you. Just be to be free, to be light, kind of trotting along life. That's the main message of horse for you. Now onto hawk or eagle. They have a little bit different messages, but I'm lumping them in here because they have similarities in some of their characteristics. So hawk or eagle, these, the birds of prey are really about a couple of characteristics that are important. One of them is keen vision. So the raptors or the birds of prey, these are, these are some of the, the most, uh, the, the best seeing animals in the animal kingdom. So an eagle can see a mouse moving in a field far up in the sky while they're just hovering up there. They can see, they have, they have some of the best eyes in the animal kingdom. And so they bring you that medicine of being able to hover above everything, to see the big picture, another medicine of, of these raptors, of these big, you know, eagles and hawks, seeing the broader picture of life, but also be having a very big laser focus and knowing how to jump in, how to dive in to grab your mouse or grab your prey, but then returning to the sky. Okay. So eagles and hawks, they have a broader vision. They see with higher perspective, but they also can kind of have a laser vision and dip down uh, to catch prey when necessary, but they always return to the skies, okay? Another important symbolism for these birds is that they, they often symbolize connection with spirit, okay? Because the eagle and the hawk, they're a very big symbol of connection, bridging the, the earth and spirit, bridging matter and spirit. So when a hawk comes to you or an eagle comes to you, they're talking about maintaining a broader vision, seeing the higher perspective of things, being able to know when to dip into action, but then return to the skies and having a strong connection with spirit. Now on to the lion. So lion is lion medicine is really about strength and courage, a lot of courage, a lot of strength. The lion represents also personal power. So when a lion comes to you or you, when you call on the lion, you're calling on the medicine of being able to stand in your power without being swayed by others. That is the courageous and the strong energy of the lion that it brings to you. Personal power, perseverance, standing on my own two feet without letting other people manipulate me or, or push me around. 
and a lot of courage and strength to overcome things. The lion is also perfect medicine for leadership. Okay, so lion brings you the medicine of leadership. Lion is a great totem animal for people who want to run businesses or who are in positions of leadership in general. This is a great totem to have around. Now on to turtle. So turtle medicine, there's this saying, slow and steady wins the race. And this is perfect to describe uh, turtle medicine. So turtle comes to you to show you that just keep taking one little step at a time and it could be really slow and that's fine, but the turtle keeps going and it gets to its destination the same way also, okay? So slow and steady wins the race. The turtle is a lot about patience, about knowing how to go slow but steady. A lot of patience, a lot of patience. Turtle medicine is a, about a lot of patience but also not being afraid of just keep going. So the turtle, even though it takes little steps, it keeps going and it eventually gets to its destination. So turtle medicine is great for when you need to take things nice and slow and steady, but you're still moving along nonetheless, okay? So that's turtle medicine for you. Now onto whale medicine. So whale is the, the animal, the spirit animal of the great depths. So whales will dive into depths that sometimes we can't even get to in submarines. Okay, so, so whales are the deep divers of the ocean. They go very deep, so they symbolize to us uh, really knowing how to tap into the mystery of the universe because whales go to places in the ocean that we have never been to, that we have never seen before. So whales symbolize the mystery of the depths, knowing how to go deep, knowing how to trust the mystery of the universe. There's a saying, there's a biblical saying that goes something like, God moves in mysterious ways, okay? This God moves in mysterious ways, this is whale medicine, okay? And it's sometimes the understanding that when whale comes to you, a whale is saying, just trust that you may not know what's going on, but trust that the universe has some miraculous mechanisms that you don't realize, but that are working and that are beautiful and that are always helping you. Okay. So this, this trusting the mystery is big, big well, with whale medicine learning how to trust the universe even when you can't see where you're going, okay? So trusting the mystery, trusting life, trusting the universe, that's the, the biggest medicine that whale brings you. Now on to ladybug. So ladybug is, I love ladybugs so much. So ladybugs come to you really with messages of abundance, with messages of joy, but also with a lot of lightness. So the, the, um, the ladybug is known in a lot of cultures as um, a, an animal of good fortune. Okay, so an animal of good fortune, a lot of abundance, a lot of good fortune, but also the symbology of lightness, Lo knowing how to be playful in your life, not taking things too seriously, just knowing how to play. <laughs> That's also ladybug um, medicine. So lightness, knowing how to play, but also abundance and good fortune when a ladybug shows up. Now on to jaguar. So jaguar is a really powerful animal in shamanism. And jaguar is really the quintessential uh, spirit animal of what's known as shadow work. Okay, so shadow work is literally, the shadow is just looking at parts of you that you don't recognize and that you don't see. They're kind of in the shadow, they're not in the light, you're not conscious of them. That's what the shadow means. And the jaguar is an expert in this. And the reason is, if you look at the behavior of a jaguar in its natural environment, you won't, you won't notice a jaguar unless it's about to attack you. <laughs> because the jaguar is an expert of lurking in the darkness of the forest. They will stalk their prey. You will not know that there's a jaguar there unless you're in trouble. <laughs> so the jaguar is the expert of shadow work. It teaches you shadow work. It teaches you how to go into the darkness of the forest how to go into the darkness of your own inner being, not being afraid, doing that work with patience. The, the jaguar is an animal of great patience. It will only attack its prey when it's certain that it can get a kill. So it'll stalk, it'll be very patient, it won't move, it'll kind of move around in the darkness. That's the energy of, of Jaguar. It brings you this patience, but also knowing how to go into your own shadow and doing that work of bringing to the surface the things that you don't want to see and recognize in yourself. There's one last characteristic of Jaguar too that's very important, especially in shamanism, is Jaguar represents spiritual rebirth, okay? So when a Jaguar shows up, and it kind of goes hand in hand with the Jaguar's energy of, of being the symbol of shadow work, 
Because the more you go within you, the deeper you go into the parts of you that are unrecognized and that you don't see, the more light you bring into you. And the more light you bring into you, the more you ascend energetically. So you're going up in your energy. And that's why this Jaguar symbolizes spiritual rebirth. It symbolizes deep awakening in you, the ability for you to see things that were unseen in you. All right. So spiritual rebirth, another main theme with Jaguar medicine. Now on to snake medicine. So snake medicine, snakes show up to show you how to shed the old. So snakes literally shed their old skin and grow new one. And they do this constantly as they're growing. And so the snake medicine comes in to help you heal and let go of the past, shedding your old self constantly, learning how to just shed your old self without being afraid. Snake medicine is also very strongly associated with the divine feminine. Okay, so very strong feminine energy that comes with with the serpent or snake energy. But for the most part, uh, and uh, you kind of know why that the, the, the feminine and healing goes together, because the feminine energy is the energy of the healer. And so very strong feminine energy. But the main theme really of this snake is to be able to heal and let go of the past, shedding everything in your life that no longer serves you. One of the reasons why snakes shed their skin is because their body grows and their skin starts to get hard and tight around their body. That's why they shed it. They shed it because the old skin is becoming confining. And that's what snake medicine brings you. Snake medicine comes to you and says, hey, honey, your, your life, whatever you're doing right now is becoming confining and you need to break out of it. <laughs> okay. So that is the big medicine of snake. It's a wonderful totem animal also, and a great power animal to call to you in times when you need to break out of the box and change things in your life. And the last animal we're going to talk about today is the spider. Okay. So spider is also a really strong feminine energy brings a really is imbued with a lot of feminine energy. Spider is known as the dream weaver. Okay. So spider is uh, an animal that will bring you the medicine of creating, weaving your dreams, creating your dreams. So spiders are meticulous artists. They meticulously construct their webs. So they're very hardworking. They get their webs prepared, but then they sit at the center of the web and they patiently wait for an insect to fall on. So they patiently wait for the universe to bring sustenance onto their, onto their web. Okay. So the, the spider brings you this beautiful combination of knowing how to construct and how to, how to do things in your outside world to make your dreams come true. But at the same time, also learning to then once the work is done, now it's time to patiently wait. So the spider has these beautiful two characteristics of doing things and working, but also knowing how to surrender and being patient to wait for the universe to deliver what's in our highest good. Okay. So very strong medicine dream weaver. When you see a spider, she's asking you to weave your dreams. On to part four of the video, how to find your spirit animal. So now that you know all about spirit animals and some of the meanings of these top animals that we discussed before, now let's get into a really simple five-step process that I love using to connect you with your spirit animal. So you can use this, this five-step process. This really is a ceremony really, but you can use this five-step process, whether you're trying to discover what your spirit, your lifelong spirit animal or your totem animal is, or you can do this ceremony to call a power animal to you, or you could do this ceremony to just wait to see what kind of spirit animal. Remember the three types that we talked about, spirit animal, totem animal, and power animal. You can use this ceremony to connect with any of these, of these types. Okay. It's a really simple ceremony. It works very well. If it doesn't work the first time that you do it, don't worry. You just keep trying and keep practicing. Okay. So let's get to the five steps. Step number one is to use night energy. Okay. So wait Wait till the sun sets before you do this ceremony. I love to use the energy of the night to connect with, uh, with spirit animals. Uh, pro tip here, ding, ding. A pro tip is if you could do this ceremony outside immersed in nature, that's even better. That'll really amplify the energy and the likelihood that you will connect with spirit animals will be much higher than if you're in a house with no windows. Okay. So, but if you can't go outside and be immersed in nature, that's fine. You could do it in your house. I'm just giving you a pro tip that you have, if you have the chance to go outdoors and be immersed in nature while you're doing this, uh, it'll amplify the energy more. 
Step two is to use drumming music, okay? It's not a coincidence that all major shamanic cultures in the world, when they are working with animal medicine, they are drumming constantly, okay? Now, what, what's with drumming? What does drumming do? Drumming really brings you in contact with your physical body. When you immerse yourself in drumming, you start to connect with your heartbeat. And when you connect with your heartbeat, you connect with your body. And this is why it's so powerful, because if I connect with my body, my body is the most animalistic part of who I am, okay? It's the part of me that's most connected with nature. The more that I come out of my mind and into my body, the higher the likelihood that I'm going to connect with spirit animals because I'm in my animalistic, more animalistic part of me, okay? So I love to put some drumming music on. I have drums, so I actually use drums. But if you don't have a drum, you could just put a nice shamanic drumming track on and just start listening to it. Start letting that drumming music immerse, start moving. Moving, okay, so drumming music is a really important preparation. You can have other things going on. You could light a candle. You can burn some incense. You can do all of these other things. But I'm giving you the main steps that you should follow when connecting, and the drumming music is absolutely essential. Step number three is one of my favorite, and it's body movement. Okay, so once you start drumming, now you're going to close your eyes and you're going to start moving your body to the rhythm of the drum. But you're not going to think about what you're doing. You're going to surrender to your body and let your body move the way that it wants to move. Is This is so cool, and this has happened to me with so many clients that I've worked with over the years. I will sometimes be doing an animal spirit ceremony for them, and I'll be sitting there drumming, and the person will start dancing, and they're not even conscious that they're dancing in the same way. They're moving their body in the same way that the spirit animal that's coming to them would move. So I've had people where I'm drumming, and I'm looking at them dancing, and they haven't told me what their spirit animal is. They haven't even consciously recognize that that's the spirit animal, but I already know that, for example, the spirit animal is the snake because the person starts to move in very kind of fluid, kind of S-shaped movements, symbolizing the movement of a snake. And uh, this has happened with other animals too. This is such a powerful step. A lot of times your body will start to move in the same, mimicking the movements of the spirit animal before your conscious mind is even aware that that's the spirit animal that's coming to you. Okay. So movement, allowing your body to move at the rhythm of the drums and just letting it spontaneous move, move spontaneously move without controlling with the mind. That's super important. Okay. Cause if you, if your mind tries to control and it starts to say, that's so stupid. Why am I moving in this way? You're going to cut the energy. Okay. So don't let the mind control surrender to your body and let it move in whatever ways it wants to, even if they seem weird to you. Step number four is invocation, okay? So here, you're going to be dancing. The shamanic music is going to be going. The drums are going to be moving. You're going to be dancing, and then you're going to come to a point where you're feeling really in your body, and now it's time to invoke the spirit guide. And you can invoke the spirit guide out loud is the best, okay? You're going to repeat a mantra over and over and over again to reinforce the, the, the calling of that spirit animal, okay? You can use any mantra that you want, but I'm going to give you a couple that I really love to use, so you may want to start with these ones, okay? So you're going to start to repeat, I lovingly call forth my spirit animal. So here's one. Or you can say, I lovingly call forth the animal medicine that I need right now. Okay. I love that one too. All right. So you're, you, whatever mantra you choose, you're just going to repeat it over and over again as you're dancing to the drums. The more that you repeat that, the more that animal medicine is going to come to you. The last step is step number five is silence and stillness. So when you're in, after you invoke and you're drumming and you're dancing, sometimes what's going to start happening is you will receive the vision of that animal immediately. So what I mean by vision is you may start seeing actual visions of the animal or you may just feel the animal. Maybe you don't see it with your third eye, but you feel what it is. Regardless, that animal medicine is going to come to you in various ways, and at some point, you're going to want to stop dancing, turn off the music, and you're going to sit down in stillness and in silence, 
just in that silence of connecting further to the animal once you've kind of detected what it is, okay? And this is also a great place to take out a journal and start writing down what you saw during your invocation, what you saw and what you felt when you were dancing, what animal came through to you, what, is the animal saying anything to you, is the animal talking to you, or is the animal just giving you energy? Write, write, write. This is a really good a time for journaling. And then afterwards, when you come out of this, the, the silence and stillness, then you can go Google the spiritual meaning of the animal. But for now, at the end of your ceremony, give yourself enough time to just be in silence and in stillness, connecting further with the energy of that animal that came to you. So now that you know all about spirit animals, I also wanted to let you know that I shot another video with other types of spirit guides, and I'm going to leave a link to that video in the description box below so you can learn not only about spirit animals, but about all other kinds of different spirit guides that you can also call on and connect with to help you in your life. Now I want to hear from you. Do you know who your spirit animal is? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to download your free supplemental workbook. There's a link to that workbook in the description box below. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website where you can download my popular free guided meditations. And don't forget this video on spirit guides. This will be a great one for you to continue watching after this. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I'm out.